A little while ago, we took the GoPro Hero 7 out for a night ride to try and find the best nighttime settings. Then we did the same with the Hero 10. Now that the Insta360 RS has been out for a little while, you guys have been requesting a similar video for the RS. Just so you know, this video is based on the 4K boost lens only, not the 360 lens. I will be making a dedicated 360 RS versus 1X2 video very soon, so make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss it on that. Alrighty, so all we need to do now is wait for the sun to go down. I haven't actually gone on the ride yet. I'm gonna take you with me. It's gonna be a first time for both of us. In the meantime, I need to get organized because I got crap literally everywhere. It's everywhere. And if you're anything like me, you need all the organizational help you can get. Luckily, I have found the best free organizational tool that you can start using today, like right now. It's called Notion and it's gonna blow your mind. Be warned, your productivity levels are gonna skyrocket. That's skyrocket. I was introduced to Notion back in August of 2021. And since then, not only has my YouTube video performance skyrocketed, but so has the quality of my videos, my organizational skills for business, finance, future projects, life in general, and most importantly, my daily productivity. It is legit the very first thing I open when I boot up my computer every day, and the last thing I close before going home and is my companion that keeps me structured all from the one place. It's the one-stop shop when it comes to organizational apps. Let me show you. So once you hit the link in the description below, it'll take you to this. This is the template. And you can go over here, hit duplicate, make an account up, and that'll literally just bring it into your, your Notion. But this is my personal Notion. First, I set my short and long-term goals that I wanna see every day for motivation. I then plan my day using checklists. So whatever you need to get done during the day, lay it all out here first thing in the morning or the day before. And then as you're done, you can just keep on checking them off. If you wanna add more, you can literally just hit enter and be like, install alarm system. And then you can go ahead and just check that off as well. And if you wanna move things around, you can just literally click and drag that to there and it moves it around. I also have an organizational section where I plan the location of my next moto adventures. And you can go full on directions, Google Maps. I've already put the hyperlink in there for you. And that's how far it, <laughs> isn't that nuts? Look at that, that's so far. And even a whole dedicated section to YouTube ideas, scripting and shot lists. If you're after a template in particular, then you can search Notion's library of hundreds, then import them straight into your homepage and begin customizing. For example, let's go simple budget here. And now we just go to use this template. There it is, and we've got it on our little sidebar thing here, but it's not part of the homepage yet. So we're just gonna click and drag that and drag it underneath the motor fields thing and boop, it got put in somewhere, there it is. And now we've got it. And now let's just say we wanna put that over to organizational. There it is there. So now we can keep everything nice and organized. Open that up and then boom, then they've got their own little tutorial on how to type everything in and everything. The Notion app is completely free and is a cloud-based system that syncs to your phone and vice versa. There's a desktop version which I use to get most of my work done, but it's also available to iPhone and Android, so you'll never be without it. In the description below, you'll find a link to my own personal free Notion template that I've created for you guys and that I've used since owning this app. Feel free to add it to your homepage and customize it to suit your needs. I've created a dedicated Notion tutorial, which I'll also link in the description below to help you get started. Get Notion, get organized, hell's yeah. Okay, so here we are in Melbourne City. It was a Saturday night, so traffic might be a little bit up there. Also, just so you know, this footage is completely ungraded. This is what it looks like straight out of the camera. And this is full auto, guys. So this is when you turn the camera on, hit record. This is what it looks like. And it's not bad. It's actually a lot better than I thought it was gonna be. The half inch sensor, uh, it is larger than most other sensors, even the GoPro Hero 10, so you do get more light, which helps with obviously lighting up your scene. What I did notice is that the flow state stability isn't working as well as what it is during the day. I think that's just because of the whole low light thing. I'm pretty sure these sensors, the processors pick up around the edges, and if it's too dark around the edges of the screen, the footage is gonna come out a little bit shakier. But I don't know, how much, how much are you gonna be using this thing at night? you know what I mean? And moving your head around and stuff like that. If you just mount it up to something secure, you're gonna have a nice smooth bit of footage that you can actually use at night. This is actually pretty good. I'm actually stoked with this. Moving on to 25 frames, 1 50th of a second, doubling that frame rate. ISO 800 white balance on auto. Now, obviously it's a little bit darker. That's the ISO being controlled there down at 800 ISO. It's a lot less grainier though as well. White balance on auto. I feel like the white balance does a great job. It's not shifting too much. 
You know, it's not going from blue to orange or anything like that. It's it's pretty steady. My headlight's quite blue. So I think the white balance is going towards the orange side a little bit more just to warm it up. But I think that looks cool. It's not as bright though. I do like my footage to be a little bit brighter, which moves us right along to the same settings, but ISO at 1600. Now we're getting there. You can see that little step up in brightness. And I feel like the grain, I don't know. I don't I don't feel like the grain is that, that much worse, you know? I feel like it's actually still good and usable. ISO 1600 is what I usually have my Mac set to on GoPro and on this as well, which I think works out pretty well. Like that's fantastic. Obviously we're in a pretty well lit scene here as well. If I'm using an action camera at night, it's gonna be in a well lit area. There's no in the world I'm gonna be riding back country roads or back streets or anything like that in pitch black using an action camera. You're just, you're asking for it. You're not gonna get good quality footage. But for this, I think this is great. And of course, I love my John Wick style cinematic goodness. So we've gone to uh, 3200 Kelvin with the same settings as the previous scene. So obviously everything's a lot more blue. And I'm actually not sure now if I prefer the blue or if I prefer the white balance to just be set to auto. Um, it is a vibe though. These are the settings that I would usually use that I prefer on GoPro. Okay, now we've stepped up to 30 frames a second and doubling the shutter speed to the frame rate. We're hitting 1 60th of a second. ISO 800, white balance on auto. So you can tell that it's a lot darker. Usually I shoot at 30 frames during the day. At night, I think I will stick to the 25 frames a second. It's just because the shutter speed's moving faster. So you're going to get less light hitting that sensor. And just so you know, guys, I am not using an ND filter. I would never use an ND filter at night. It's dark enough. The aim of the game for low light shooting is to get as much light into the sensor as possible. So 1 60th of a second, that's faster than 1 50th of a second. So that's why it's a little bit darker here. Bumping it up to 1600 ISO, still quite dark, but it is... It's usable footage, I don't mind it. Obviously with a higher frame rate, you get that less sort of choppy, old school feel. I mean, my timeline here is in 25 frames anyway, so we're not getting the full true 30 frames a second feel, but you can see the effect it has on the exposure. And so this here, <laughs> I had to try it. The Insta360 ONE RS goes up to 6400 ISO and max, like there's a boost sort of max version. So I thought I'd give it a well, see how it looks. And so we're at 25 frames here. White balance is at 3200 Kelvin. You can see it's just grainy as it actually looks pretty horrible, but this street's pretty low light. You can see my headlight is just bright as, and it's, it works. You still, you can see everything. I guess it's better than a dark picture and you could use some anti-grain software. Like that building on the left there is almost white. So it's doing a great job at lifting all the highlights as much as it can. It's boosting everything, but it is just hella, hella grainy. So there it is guys, which one is your favorite? For me personally, it's the 25 frames, 1600 ISO, 1 48th or 1 50th of a second. White balance, doesn't really matter. Auto, 3200, I like them both for different reasons. But that's my favorite, only because the slower shutter speeds allow you to have more light hit the sensor and that's what it's all about. We need as much light to come in as possible. So you wanna be riding in a well-lit sort of scenario or scene setting. Otherwise, you're just gonna be pumping that ISO and as we saw, it gets all fuzzy and grainy and blotchy and really just, you know, pretty garbage. But let me know your favorite setting and, um, I'll and, I'll, and I'll also link a video here. You can watch that and it's about shutter speed and how it affects your footage. Watch this video here if you'd like to compare this footage to that of the GoPro that I did a little while ago. It's all nighttime stuff. Nighttime is still a time. It's at night. It's why well, they call it nighttime. It's a good time. See ya. <laughs> okay. <laughs>